Let's go to Jim now, listening in Asheville, North Carolina. Hi, Jim. Good morning, Dr. Madrid. You talked to a young lady, and I agree with everything you said, but at the conclusion, you were, you were saying, God won't be mad at you. And then you made the comment that God doesn't have emotion, but if you want to look at it that way, he won't be mad at you. Mm-hmm. And I, I had an issue with the emotion part, because first of all, I, I thought God was a loving God, and I thought love was an emotion, but I looked it up on the internet, love is not an emotion. But there's that, mm-hmm. that part in Luke where Jesus is baptized, mm-hmm. and a voice from, from the cloud says, this is my son with whom I'm well pleased. Right. And I'm thinking that pleased is an emotion. Okay. This is a great question. And it gets to the heart of what do these terms mean, especially when we see them applied to God in the Bible. Like God repented of ever having created man, we're told in Genesis, before he sends the flood to punish. You know, what does that mean exactly? And it would seem to suggest that God has emotions like we do, and the Church says no, and I'll give you the reasons why. But the first thing is to recall that in many of these instances, the language that's used is a way to convey something to us in a way that we'll understand, but it's inadequate. It, it, it doesn't do justice to the sublime reality of who God is. And you, you mentioned the word pleased as appearing to be an emotion. You know, you're pleased with something. So when we see terms like that applied to God in Scripture, we have to we have to see them within the context of another truth, and that is that God is perfect and infinite, and to use a phrase that the philosophers use, he's pure act. Now, work with me on this one. This is a very important concept to help us understand how to answer your question. But part of God's nature, or an aspect of God's nature, is that he is he has he is the sum of all perfections truth goodness beauty unity etc he doesn't have them as qualities the way you do and i do he he has them but he is those things like he is existence itself when he met moses or when moses came before him in the form of the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3, and Moses asks his name. It's a very curious name. He says, I am who am. So it, even in our language, our human language, it's, it's not easy to render that meaning precisely, but the meaning is, I am, basically, I am existence. I am that I am. I am who am, he says. So there's an example, and from that we know that there's nothing that God could have that he doesn't have. There's nothing that God could get that he doesn't already have, because then he would be not infinite in some way, in which case it it would be contradictory to his nature as God. So that has a very important place in looking at your question, and the answer to your question ultimately is no, God does not have emotions. And the reason why he doesn't have emotions is because emotions, and St. Thomas talks about, he doesn't use the word emotion, he uses the word passion. He uses the word passion. So a passion, in the sense of an emotion, it's something that's working on you. It's it's acting upon you from the outside. There's an external um, force or something that's acting upon you that makes you feel angry or sad or happy or whatever. Now, God doesn't have anything working on him from the outside the way we do. We have our physiology. So when you're hungry or you're tired and you get hangry, because you haven't had a meal in a while, it's those things that are working on you and they affect your emotions. So it could be psychosomatic, it could be purely bodily, it could be the sight of somebody in need, it could be any number of things. We human beings experience these passions, and I'm not talking about sexual passion, I'm talking about the passions of emotions, and then also it gets into appetites, but God has none of those things, and because if he did, that would mean he could change. And because God can't change, we have to understand these phraseologies in Scripture correctly to mean that this is, you know, God is pleased with Jesus, but it's not a passing emotion. It's not like yesterday he was in the doldrums, and now, oh, look, my, my only begotten son is getting baptized. Oh, I'm really happy about that. See, that's how we human beings are. We move, 
we transit from one point to another, we move in and out of emotions. They're like the weather, they come and they go. God is not like that in himself as God. He doesn't experience anything like that. So that's the best answer I could give you in short form, but it still it still remains that you'll see passages like that in scripture. And it's it's the inadequate it's the inadequacy of human language that is conveying to us something true about God, but in a way that we can kind of sort of understand. But we have to keep a close eye on some of these other things that are true about God, lest we, without even realizing it, perhaps think of him as just a, sort of like a glorified man who has emotions and appetites, which God doesn't have. Does, does that make a little more sense? Does that shed a little more light on it for you, Jim? It does. I appreciate the answer. You're welcome. I realize I it's a weighty today. talk. Thank you, Jim. It's a weighty topic, I understand, and but it's you see, these are things about God that are so worth our time to ponder. And I have a feeling that you would really enjoy a book by Frank Sheed called Theology and Sanity, easily obtainable online or at your local Catholic bookstore. But it's it's really good, and uh, he delves into a lot of these things. So check that out, Jim. Thank you.